Hi there, welcome to Nepi Invest. We are in the middle of, actually, we're towards the end of October 2023. This is quarterly reporting season. And in the next week, in fact, seven trading days, we are going to see a flurry of Appendix 4Cs and Appendix 5Bs. And because we get so many of these quarterly reports over the next week, week I am going to be busy going through these reports. Now, I like to award the company releases the first Appendix 4C or 5B of the quarter with a video. Now, originally, I thought it was Althea, and I did a video on that company, T code AGH, and then I just, for some reason, missed that another company called Talius, T code TAL, released their Appendix 4C the day before Althea. And that is the only reason I'm doing a video on this company today. Now, to be fair with you, I had never heard of Talius, and there is a reason behind it, because this company was originally named, when it listed on the ASX, as HSC Technology Group, with a T-code HSC, and yes, I had heard of that company, and then they changed their name to Talius, with a T-code T-A-L, in May 2023, and to be honest with you, I haven't or didn't really follow HSC Technology Group, which had nothing to do with education, even though it's called HSC I didn't really follow that company all that closely. So I was completely unaware that they actually changed their name. Now into what Talius does. And there is some things to like about this company. They are a technology company, SaaS company, uh, if you will. And they provide a suite of technology-enabled care solutions to the aged and disability sectors across multiple verticals, including retirement living, residential aged care, home, and community settings to improve the quality of life. Now, their software as a service data analytics platform, Talia Smart Care, combines smart sensors with AI machine learning. And in itself, those three words are quite important because they're sort of in vogue words, AI machine learning, that delivers automated actions. Talia links awareness, analysis, and action through one platform, allowing the care model to move from spot check care to sense respond care. Nursing staff can switch their focus from data collection to building a human connection. Isn't that absolutely wonderful? Most importantly, residents benefit from a new era of autonomy and dignity. Now, a few facts in regards to Talius. They listed on the ASX as HSC Technology in November 2018. It was a backdoor listing via Antilles Oil and Gas. And for those investors who have been around for a while, you might remember back between about 2015 and maybe 2017, 18, there were a lot of backdoor listings. The managing director of this company is Graham Russell. He has a 6.4% stake in this company. Now, something interesting. Now, it says, uh, if you look at a few websites, that the largest shareholder of this company is Net Worth Investments with 16.1% holding. Now, I believe, with the little research I've done, that Net Worth Investments is linked to the managing director Graham Russell, which would mean he has a high stake in this company. Now, I haven't quite confirmed that just yet, but it does seem like the net wealth investments does have that link with Graham Russell. Might be his super fund or something like that. Shares an issue, probably a little bit too high. I would like to see that come down a little bit. 2.29 billion shares. And when they actually did backdoor onto the ASX, they only had 500 million shares. So shares on issue have more than quadrupled in the last five years. And the market cap of this company is $25 million. That's a share price of 1.1 cents. So have a look at the share price, what it is doing, because I actually did this video or set up this video a little while ago. And the share price of Talius Group, as I speak, is still 1.1 cents. So even though the overall market has gone down over the past few, well, past week or so, uh, Talius share price has not been affected. And one of the reasons maybe it hasn't been affected is because of this particular quarter report. Before we have a look at the company's September quarter report results for financial year 24, let's have a look at one year ago to see how this company performed in financial year 23. Now, this company has a slightly different reporting season than many companies on the ASX. So this was their third quarter of the financial year. So we can see the current quarter in year to date, which is nine months. And there were some concerning things at this point in time. Now, receipts of customers, $1.7 million, and they were operating cash flow negative $836,000 for the quarter and $2.5 million for the year to date. And then when you have a look at the cash on hand, it was only $669,000. So if they burn through $836,000 in one quarter, 
and they only have $669,000 in cash at the end of the quarter, this is a big red flag. If they continue to burn through cash like they did in this quarter, the likelihood of a capital raising is quite high. In fact, it will be over 100%. Well, not over 100%. It will be 100%. If they kept burning cash like they were in this quarter. And if you are concerned, when you look at uh, section one, section two, section three, go to section eight, because you can get some answers in that section. So let's have a look at section eight in this particular quarter for those answers. So section eight is just an estimated cash available for future operating activities. And if it is less than two, for Talis, it was 0 0.8. They have to answer some questions in section 8.6. I'm going to go through one of the questions. And that question is, does the entity expect that you will continue to have the current level of net operating cash flows for the time being? And if not, why not? And they answered, no. And their explanation for that, the company expects the net operating cash flow position to improve from this quarter to the next as a result of terms agreed with the company's major supplier. And the bottom paragraph, they say net operating cash flow is anticipated to further improve into the first quarter 2023 following product delivery for all the contracted sales are secured with major clients. So let's have a look at the third quarter in financial year 24 to see if management were right. It's a possibility the management don't know what they're talking about and they still had to write, do a cover raising, but let's see if they were right in this case. And if they were right, we can put more trust into management moving forward. And indeed, management were absolutely right. When we look at this particular quarter result and compare it to one year ago, things are much better for this company. They're in much better position right now, particularly if we compare the current quarter and the year to date to one year ago. So receipts of customers have grown substantially. In fact, they were up $3.2 million from one year ago to $4.8 million. Not only that, receipts have grown at a quicker rate than their spending. Administration costs, only up $250,000. Staff costs, up $300,000. Product manufacturing and operating costs, up $1.1 million. So they have reached some operating leverage, some scale, which means the company is now operating cash flow positive, not only in the quarter, but for the first nine months of the year. $737,000 $737, in the quarter, over $1 million operating cash flow for the year to date. And you have a look at the cash. Instead of cash going down, cash is now going up, increasing from $992,000 to $1.6 million. And the company did not do a capital raising. And so one thing I love to do for all companies, releasing quarter reports, in fact, any company at all that is listed on the ASX or international exchanges, is have a look at either the receipts or revenue history. A really good predictor of future success for a company in terms of outperforming or underperforming the market. Now, it's not the only uh, metric you need to look at, but it's definitely one of the main metrics to focus on, receipts and revenue history. And the thing I'm looking for here is receipts going up through time. So this is Tally Tallius's receipts history going back to 2019 when they were known as HSC Technology. And you look at uh, from this beginning of this period all the way through to 2022, receipts going sideways. And then all of a sudden, something happened in late 2022, and receipts have really started to take off. I'm not sure what's behind that, but receipts have almost tripled in one year. But the market doesn't care about that. The market doesn't care at all about this company right now. And this is the daily chart of the company going all the way back to the middle of 2020. Share price of Tallis Group did get as high as 2.5 cents in April or March 2021. And the share price has been decreasing ever since then. Has been as low as 0.7 cents not that long ago. In fact, the day before they released their quarterly report, for some reason, there was a little bit of selling that day. Share price fell to 0.7. And then the next day, when they released their results, share price popped up to 1.2 cents. And the share price has gone sideways since then. Just imagine selling uh, this company at 0.7 cents and then seeing the next day rising to 1.2 cents just be because you sold one day too early. So at this point in time, what I'll be looking on, focusing on when it comes to Talius Group is if they can maintain being operating cash flow positive, and not only that, free cash flow, flow positive as well. If they can, can do that, increase the cash on hand, it gives the management way more flexibility in the future. What they can what they can do with their increasing cash on hand, maybe acquisitions, maybe eventually dividends. 
And if that actually does happen, there will be a turnaround in the share price of this company. But at this point in time, the market just doesn't trust this company just yet. And one reason it doesn't trust this company is because it is a small cap company that hasn't been profitable in the past. And these sort of companies, the market is still a little bit wary about. And that is all I have for this quarter report video for Talius. First time I have looked at Talius and it was uh, intriguing what I saw around this company, particularly because of how this company has grown the receipts over the past year. And the very fact that this company is operating cash flow and free cash flow positive. The question I have is can they continue that momentum in the next quarter, in the current quarter, the December quarter? And if they can, I think there is potential for this company because it's, it has a markup of only $25 million, which is low for a company that might be profitable in the very near future. So if you have any questions about Talius Group, any thoughts, leave those in the comment section of this video. Otherwise, I'm not a financial advisor. If you do need financial advice, make sure you seek out someone who is qualified and can speak to your own financial needs. That's it for this video. Have a good day. Bye.